Alrighty, we're going to be doing a little bit of war driving today, but not war driving is how you usually define it by driving around and scanning for Wi-Fi signals. Instead, we're going to be looking for other signals. I got my fancy little RTL SDR hooked up here to my phone on the terminal arm mount. Very fancy, just velcroed to my dashboard. And what we're doing right now is we're scanning through some of the FRS and GRS frequencies. Uh, those are the public frequencies that can be used by uh, essentially the little walkie-talkies that you get in Walmart will work on FRS. The requirements are that they are channel locked, they can't change between frequencies, they can only change between channels that are set to frequencies, and they can't have a changeable antenna, and they have to be under 2 watts, I believe, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, so a lot of times, since they don't require licenses and they work at very short ranges, right, especially line of sight and different obstacles, the range you're getting with those is going to be really short. Uh, a lot of a lot of the times they'll be used for either people just messing around with walkie talkies and talking, or sometimes businesses who can't afford or you know don't necessarily want to spend the money on very fancy encrypted business radios. We'll essentially just get those um, walkie talkies and use them on similar brands. I'm not sure about the licensing as far as using them for business purposes on amateur bands. The licensing might be a little bit different, but. Um, Still, there's, there's generally speaking a lot of traffic. So what we're going to be doing is I could set my radio to scan through these frequencies by itself, but that's just going to take up a little bit more time than what we have and then what I'm willing to use. And it's also a little bit hard because if someone's transmitting while you're scanning on another frequency, you're never going to see that. That's where the RTL SDR comes in. It allows me to essentially set it to a certain to a certain list of frequencies, right? I can zoom out and zoom in, and I can just look on the spectrum analyzer and see, okay, am I getting anything? Is there just a little bit of noise or is someone actually transmitting? And then, if someone's transmitting, I can go ahead and tune it to that frequency, set whatever demodulation mode I might need there, and voila, we're good to go. So that's one of the advantages of being able to use something like a software-defined radio versus uh, something like a ham radio, right? If I'm not necessarily wanting to transmit on frequencies, but I'm just wanting to listen and become more communicationally, situationally aware, right? Paying attention to different surroundings, paying attention to different things that are going on on uh, different radio frequencies. This allows me to do it a lot more easily and allows me to scan a wider range of frequencies and kind of, you know, be visual about it, right? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna see Okay, here, there's something on, you know, 462.562, and I can go ahead and switch that frequency, demodulate, listen to it, and if I need to, if I want to um, listen to it on my handheld radio, for instance, if I have that plugged into my ear pro or something like that, I can go ahead and I can just tune my radio to that frequency as well if the radio works on those frequencies, and I can listen to that. Another advantage to software-defined radios is they can operate outside of the VHF, UHF bands, or whatever else, uh, whatever other frequencies your radio might be locked to. Um, so essentially that allows you to be able to see more of the radio spectrum higher and lower than maybe what your radio can go. Uh, it's going to be a little bit dependent on your antenna. You know, no antenna is perfect for every single application, but generally speaking, um, I don't, I'm not a huge antenna nerd. There's a lot of radio frequency stuff that I really don't understand. Um, as I like to say, electrical engineering is magic. Radio frequency stuff is black magic. Um, it's absolutely kind of crazy how um, radio stuff just works in general and how uh, you can put a signal through, you know, a length of wire and then all of a sudden this other person with you know a similar length of wire can receive it I, I just think that's absolutely amazing so yeah that's some of the advantages of software defined radios so I think we're gonna go ahead and keep driving around and see if we pick anything up oh speaking of which I think I see something let's tune into that So we went ahead and turned around and are just parked sitting here for a little bit because obviously under 2 watts these radio frequencies don't travel very far, they're not really strong, and the antenna I'm using right now is 
pretty short, so it's not going to pick him up too well. Um, but nevertheless, uh, even down a couple hundred yards farther, we're still getting this signal. So it's coming from somewhere pretty close. So I think we're just going to park here right now and see if we pick up anything else. All right, so it doesn't seem like we're gonna be getting too much more out of those guys. So I think we're gonna go ahead and keep driving and wait for this guy to pass us. And pull out beautifully. Another thing you're probably gonna to wanna to do if you are wanting to drive around and kind of look at what frequencies are poking about in your town or area of locale. Something that you can do that can help you with analysis and things like that is write it down. If you hear a frequency, you hear someone transmitting, stop for a bit, listen, see what kind of stuff you can pick up, and then don't cut people off. And then you're going to want to just go ahead and write that down, whether that be something you could use as actually a mapping application, something like Osmond, that's what I use for Android, and you can put a pin and you can put a bunch of stuff in the notes. Say this was the frequency I was monitoring, this was um, the dB it was at, this was the power level, this is where I was at, right? Um, this is what antenna I was using, and this is what time of day it was. And doing things like that, collecting all this data as you're going around and doing this, maybe, you know, go for 30 minutes depending on how big the area that you live in is or how big the area that you want to monitor is and go and drive around for you know 30 maybe not even 30 20 minutes one day a week right and then whatever stuff you pick up write it down you know quickly stop put a pin down write down all the information keep going and just by collecting that information similar to how long range shooters have a dope card and then they get all this information they're able to analyze uh, different changes and things. Same thing for this. Write down the information, get everything collected, and to where you have something that you can get laid out. And the more you do this, the more information you're going to have. That's something that might be helpful if this is something that you're considering doing just to be able to kind of see what's going on in the radio frequencies of the area that you live. Because it's, it's so cool to think about it. There's all this information that's constantly being transmitted all around us. And just to be able to plug something in and to see all that, I think is absolutely amazing. Another thing that'll definitely help you if you're trying to scan for frequencies and kind of like find out what's out there is know what's in your area. Know what a lot of people might be using to communicate with and figure out what channels and what frequencies they'll operate on. For instance, there's a big berm in the middle of this town that I live in. And I'm currently on the opposite side. And on this side, the city is kind of on the other side. On this side, there's a lot of farmland, farmers, large fields, large open areas, until it gets up into the mountains. So, figuring out what my range is, what can I expect. Oh, picked up something else real quick. Might have just been a little bit of noise. Um, you know, what's my range? What can I expect? What can I expect to hear and see at different frequencies? And that's just a little bit more noise that's coming through. That's all right though. And what should I tune my radio to? And what should I have? So this is a good way to kind of do things preemptively, right? Because there's a lot of information that you can find online, right? Same thing about kind of figuring out the layout of the city you live in. There's a lot of information you can find online. There's a lot of good details you can get from looking at Google Maps or in this instance from looking at frequency charts for your area. But there's so much more that you can find from actually being boots on the ground, so to speak, right? And scanning things yourself and figuring things out yourself. You know, you might find, hey, there's this, um, there's this group of people that's using this frequency to communicate. Um, kind of so on so on and so forth and just listening and just being more aware that way to if something happens if you have to use your radio to communicate 
it can already be pre-programmed to different channels. You already know what different frequencies different people operate on to where you can either listen or reach out to people for help or just be more aware in a time of need.